The Romans believed in superstition, but NASA didn't. What they had first experienced as one of their greatest achievements turned out to be their darkest hour. This is the mission of Apollo 13. Now, the crew for Apollo 13 was Jim Lovell, Ken Mattingly, and Fred Hayes. Jim Lovell was on the Apollo 8 mission. They could read each other's movements. They knew exactly what to do. But there was a problem. Two days before the launch, an outbreak of measles came along. Everyone had been exposed to it but Ken Mattingly. And they said, as soon as they'll be going off into space, Ken will be blooming. So... They had to bring in a backup crew member and train him in the two days they had left. This crew member would be Jack Swaggart. Now, it did take some time to get him up to speed and get him trained in that. But another bad omen would happen. The day before the launch, Jim Lovell's wife was taking a shower and her wedding ring fell off, straight down the drain. What she believed was an omen was now lost and something bad was going to happen. But NASA aren't superstitious bunches. So, the day of the launch, 11th of April, 1970. And the world, well, they watched the launch and Ken Mattingly still hasn't got the measles. Once they got into the vacuum of space, then came docking with the lunar module. This was not a hard task, put down to Jack Swaggart, which he succeeded. Now, it is, a cu it is customary for Apollo missions to do a live broadcast from space. However, this one was different. All the news teams in America said that NASA had made going to the moon as interesting as taking a trip to your local zoo. After two moon landings, which the government first stated you can have ten landings, then cut it down to nine, and then they would cut it down to eight, and then seven in the future. So, the live broadcast went on, which didn't go live to anyone in the nation. But six minutes after the broadcast, Mission Control told Jack Swagger to stir the oxygen and hydrogen tanks. Now, on doing so, none of the crew or engineers at NASA had noticed that insulation going into oxygen tank 2 had burned away in training, leaving open wires. And when he stirred the tanks, this caused a spark which ignited the oxygen cell. Down at Mission Control, they thought it was an instrumentation error as there was so many things going wrong. But when Jim Lovell radioed in from the Odyssey, he said these words. 13, we've got one more item for you when you get a chance. We'd like it to uh, stir up your cryo tank. In addition, uh, I have a shaft and trunnion. Okay. For a look at the Comet Bennett if you need it. Okay. Stand by. Okay, uh, Houston, we've had a problem here. This is Houston. Say again, please. Uh, uh, Houston, we've had a problem. We've had a main B bus undervolt. Roger, main B undervolt. Okay, stand by, 13. We're looking at it. And... Houston, we've had a problem. Now, the crew of Apollo 13 thought they'd been hit by an asteroid. But this was very soon reeled out when Jim Lovell looked out the window and saw a gas being vented into space. And he knew it was the oxygen. So now, they had to try and deal with all the alarms, keep the remaining oxygen in the tanks, 
and set up the lunar module as a lifeboat. The lunar module was only meant to support two men for two days, but Apollo 13 had to make it support three men for four days. This was when a fateful radio message was transmitted to the Odyssey, telling them to close the reactor valves. Closing the reactor valves meant one thing, they were not landing on the moon. But now, they had to focus on surviving. And they had powered up the LEM and managed to get it as a lifeboat. They were safe. They, they had enough oxygen to survive. Now, the first problem, well, the first ideas that flew around was how are we going to get the Odyssey home? Now, People are throwing around that maybe they could do a burn, come straight home. But they don't know if it had been damaged in the explosion, so they ruled that off quickly. And decided to go with using the moon's gravity to slingshot them round and get them on a course back home. It was when coming round the dark side of the moon where another problem arose. And that was the power situation. Now, many of the engineers and technicians had calculated that the Odyssey had 45 hours, which brought them to about two-thirds of the way home. That was not acceptable. But then, another engineer came in and said he'd be running the numbers for, for the last hour, and he worked out that the Odyssey only had 16 hours left which brought them not even a quarter home. Now the power was used for heating, the heat shields, the parachutes, uh, to do a burn, gimbals, everything. Everything. And they had to shut it all down for now. Now, once this had been done, a small team went to Ken Mattingly's house and told him, well, they got him up to speed very quickly. And he was then put with the task of trying to find a power, se power sequence which could turn on all the vital systems without going above 12 amps. That's barely enough to run a coffee machine. When they come around the far side of the moon, they were hit with another problem. It was the fact that their CO2 meter was getting a little too high and well here's the situation the lunar module used lithium hydroxide canisters for air filtration but the ones that were installed on this or the ones that they were given were lithium hydroxide cylinders so the team at Houston now had to come up with a way to fit a square peg in a round hole, which they managed to do, and that solved the carbon dioxide matter. But then came another problem. Apollo 13's mission was to land on the moon and collect some moon rock samples and bring them home. Since they hadn't landed on the moon, they were lighter than expected, and they were coming in too shallow. Now, if they did come in too shallow, then they would ricochet off the Earth's atmosphere and be lost in space forever. So, this means they had to do a burn. Now, since they had no targeting system, they had to do it virtually blind. But Jim Lovell managed to point out that if they could keep the moon in the left side mirror, no, not the moon, the Earth in the left side window, then they could steady themselves and put them back on course to not fly in space and be lost forever. This was all sorted and finally a plan for booting up the power had been resolved. And Ken Mattingly greeted the Odyssey having never got the measles. Now the Odyssey was powered up, they were now on the return journey home. But they were still a little too shallow, but there was nothing they could do about it. 
On the 17th of April 1970, the world watched to see if free Americans would die in space. Now, normal time of re-entry, which is the blackout period, is the time between space and our atmosphere, where there's no radio communications. This is normally three minutes, but since the Odyssey was coming in a little too shallow, they didn't factor that it may take longer than three minutes. After the three minutes, they continued calling the Odyssey. After four minutes, they still continued. After five, they refused to believe that they had lost three men in space. But after six minutes, they finally got radio contact back from Apollo 13. Jim Lovell, Fred Hayes and Jack Swaggart had managed to survive in space for nearly a week on the brink of death and had come home safe and sound. Now this was Jim Lovell's last flight in space and it was a good one. After this only five more Apollo missions would be made. So that is the tragic story about Apollo 13. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Let me know what you think of the film Apollo 13 featuring Tom Hanks, Kevin Bacon and Bill Paxton in the comments below. It's a, it's a good film. You should, you should watch it if you like history. And I shall see you next time for... Oh, oh did that, that, that's, that's a V1. That's a V1 coming. I, just, I, just, I need to scramble some fires.